Welcome back. Uh, this is five minutes on K-12 online learning with and today our with is with Eddie Reich coming to us from Rotorua, New Zealand. Welcome, Eddie. Hi. Um, so to get started, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, Eddie? In the educational sense? Yeah. Um, I started education in 1980, so I've been around for a while. I taught technology in years 9 to 13 over around about 16 or so years um, and taught a number of year 9 to 13 secondary schools across New Zealand. In the 90s, I started working at the Correspondence School, um, now known as Te Aoha o Tu Kura Konamu, and I began developing material for online courses for staff and was teaching online. At that stage, we were using Blackboard and video conferencing and through satellite, which was hooked onto the side of the old building, a massive, massive um, satellite dish. Um, I then ended up in the E section with Derek Wenworth and Chris Alec McPhee, Cam, and we were part of a place called the E section, and it was about transforming the correspondence school. So there was the, the virtual learning network. The concept for that was born, which it's um, a kind of a network of schools across the country. I became the ICT facilitator and PD developer leader for the staff as well as the system admin for Blackboard and other online technologies at the Craftsman School. The virtual learning net was about a cluster of schools supporting each other in their own cluster and as the clusters developed they would support each other across New Zealand with lessons that were not attainable in their school. The basis of this network was run on the principle of reciprocity when it started. To receive, you had to offer. So it was a good system and it worked, but we knew it would never scale too high. So some things have developed over the years now, and of course the technologies have changed. Um, I then went to work at the Ministry of Education as a senior analyst, looking at the technologies for the e-learning across New Zealand. Um, so I looked after a number of things for the ministry with like video conferencing and Adobe Connect and blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. I would continue to support the VLM with money and, and advice um, in both English and Māori medium. So that was a real, real uh, move for me to move into the Indigenous people as well. I had about 10 years at the ministry and I went out consulting with Māori medium um, and their, their schools are called Kura. And I did that for about three years. Um, I went back to teaching and took time off and did other bits and pieces. But after that um, 10 years, I kind of left. And then I, lately I've been working on an online environment for Māori Medium that will help push the boundaries of, of present-day education. The things that we dreamed about, personalised learning, being able to add multiple teachers to multiple classes, multiple courses, blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. But actually a system that's been built in collaboration with Māori. So Nakura Iwi are our partners. That's a group of Māori schools in New Zealand. And there's a group, another group of Māori, which are totally regional schools called Kura Kaupapa Māori, which are also looking at coming on board. So with things that are happening at the moment, um, the online environment is really looking a little bit more useful in these kind of um, sad times that we're in. Very so good. that's a bit about me and my education anyway. Very good. So I guess starting back with your time with uh, the beginnings of the VLN and through the ministry and then working with the, the, the various uh, you know, Maori groups, you've worked with a lot of teachers that have been um, introduced to these online tools in this online environment. And right now, I think you guys are just starting uh, this week to move to remote instruction. Um, throughout the country, you've got a lot of teachers that are needing uh, help in, in getting uh, up to speed in this environment. And based upon those experiences, what sort of advice would you give them? Yeah, I was lucky to start teaching online in about 89, 1998, I think it was. Um, yeah, and, and developing the virtual learning network and becoming the PD people for 300 teachers at the Correspondence School was really an interesting journey. And it did start off with, you know, basic stuff that we, we kind of just tried to transform what we did in the classroom into the online and it kind of didn't work. But anyway, um, looking at teachers in New Zealand, yeah, there are a lot of schools that I've been in lately. I've been doing a lot of relieving to, to teaching and a lot of it, um, the teachers struggle with some of the technologies. It's quite overwhelming these days. So 
what my advice to a lot of them is keep it simple make connections with other online networks that can help you you know so there are tons around like NetNZ, the vlm primary um <coughs> uh, uh, the vlm cluster schools and the ministry is also chipping in at the moment with supply and education tv channels that are coming up very soon and supplying kids with broadcasting devices for the ones that don't have it so that you get the equity of service but what I would do, I mean, when I started off, I got overwhelmed with a lot of different technologies throughout there. But I think simply, I'd, I'd collaborate with their students and negotiate with them on what they, how they want to develop the learning they they require. The kids are bright sparks and could be would be a huge help. So just just give them a go. They've got a lot of um, you know awesome you know awesome knowledge. That they can hand to you. I'd also have a look at looking wider in the group of the children to their family and whānau that um, are learning and, and get them to help them in that sort of environment as well. So rather than just the teacher and the kid and you know the, the student working with other students as well but bring in your family as well. Bring in the people you need for the different things that you want to do. Um, try not to get overwhelmed with all the technologies and the different approaches because there's tons of them out there and it gets really, really confusing. So one would be to stick with the technologies you know and go from there and then work with the kids and work with the family around it so that you can um, deliver what's what you need to do with their support. It's no good picking up something brand new and having to teach kids and family something brand new to, to learn while they're trying to learn an actual topic if you know what I mean. So that's really kind of basically my advice is just yeah, take it easy. Um, don't worry about it. I, I tend to think of things as synchronous and asynchronous, so live and not live. And when you look at the live stuff like Skype, uh, Zoom, all those different technologies, they all do different things. And then when you look at the asynchronous things like learning management systems and forums, etc., Seesaw, blah, 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 they um, all do different things as well. So go back and focus on your students and say, what am I going to teach these kids? What are we going to be learning together? And what is the best technology that fits that learning? Now, you, but yeah, look for help and go for it. Now, you mentioned the, the, the family and the role that they play in the, the educational system. And I know with the, the Maori um, population, you know, the fauna is, is a, a central part of, of yep. their partnership that they have with the, the schools. Um, what advice would you give to families now and parents who now have their kids home and they've got to play a much greater role throughout the educational process than what they've had to play in the past? What an opportunity, I reckon. <laughs> I've seen my son, he lives in Scotland, he's got three children, and I see how they're running it. And I've got another daughter in Melbourne with two babies, uh, two twin girls, and the way they're running it. And kind of what we do is, you know, for me, it's looking at structuring your day. It's the best advice I can give. So they do have a bit of fun, a bit of exercise, a bit of learning. It doesn't matter when those things happen but they are the sort of three key things that they go in throughout the day. Um, so as parents have always been your children, you know, you, as parents have always been the children's first teachers. So be flexible and aware of the best times you and your kids learn as well, so that you're not teaching them maths or trying to do something outrageous in a time when the kid's not, not acceptable or accessing that really well. So look at the patterns of the children and how they operate so that you can actually do the best things at the best time. So if you move your exercise for the afternoon and you're learning till the morning, that's fine. If it's a boy, they might learn better in the afternoon and a girl might learn better in the morning. Look at those kind of things and just go with the flow. If it's a crap day, take the day off. <laughs> you know, Talk to the online teacher um, if you're a teach, uh, uh, as a parent and offer to get involved in the online sort of um, formal education that's going on. But reach out to other family members. Example, grandparents, they're a great source of um, knowledge and would have time and love to connect. You know, being separated now with coronavirus, I'd love to get involved with the learning. 
So get hold of those and build up that network of people in this online environment so that all people can help and you don't get overwhelmed with the children. The old saying, it takes a village to raise a child, is still good today and even better because of the online environment, family, teachers, friends and support is, is only a quick click away. All right. Perfect. Well, thank you very much, Eddie. This has been another edition of 5 Minutes on K-12 Online Learning today with Eddie Reich. Kia ora. Thank you.